I want to talk about multi class classification. Right, so, so there are some classifiers that we looked at which are naturally multi class classifiers, right? Which are they? Neural networks, yeah, with a little bit of work, yeah, they are multi class, something which is more immediately multi class. Decision trees, immediately multi class, right? No need to worry, do any, any fiddling around with anything else. Naive base, right? All the Bayesian classification that we looked at, right? All those are immediately multi multi class classifiers and but then then there are things which we looked at which are inherently two class classifiers right uh, svms is one of those right very popular of those and any other two class classifiers that you know logistic regression is inherently a two class classifier but we have multi class variants of it i did the two class classifier in detail in class Right, but there are multi class uh, variants of uh, logistic regression, but again the two class one is the one that is be, uh, best understood right and any kind of discriminant function based classification that we looked at right or inherently two class classifiers right you, mean you can think of ways of uh, converting them into multi class classification, but inherently two class classifiers right. So, um, suppose I give you a very powerful mechanism for constructing a binary classifier. Can you solve a multi class classification problem using that? Let us make it even more concrete. I will give you an SVM, right? I will give you this packaged code for an SVM, right? I am telling you this is the best possible SVM implementation, but it does only binary classification. Can you use that and convert it into a multi class classification thing? How do you do that? Hey, what is the advantage of 1 versus 1? potentially be balanced right hopefully I mean depends right. So, you know, I, I could still have an unbalanced class pro, uh, uh, classification problem I might have 30 classes in which uh, each class has 10 data points and one class has 10,000 right. So, the, even 1 versus 1 will be a problem then right, but, but 1 versus all will always be a problem even if you have equal number of data points in every class 1 versus all will be a imbalanced problem right, but what is the disadvantage of 1 versus 1. How many classifiers you need in 1 versus 1? n choose 2, n choose 2 right. So, that is a lar large number of uh, classifiers. Suppose I give you a <coughs> 100 class classification problem right. So, how many classifiers will you need in 1 versus 1? Huh? Large number right. During the time when we actually want to the classify it, we need not run them all. Like at the time the time of the, the creation which which would probably be a one time process. Yeah. We would need all. Okay, and when you run when you actually want to classify, how many do you need? How many would you actually fire? Ninety Whenever you run one, you get rid of one one possibility for some. Do you? How come? Because if you know, for example, if you have class A, B, C, and D, uh -huh. uh, run the, the classifier for, for, for A versus uh, B, A versus C, A versus D, then run it for A versus B, uh -huh. you throw one of them out. Then, uh, suppose it was uh, B who won, then yeah. B versus C, and one of them out again. Uh, you could do that, right? But then uh, for that, you have to be little bit careful because the guarantees that you would have are slightly weaker yeah, right. So, this is really not called 1 versus 1 ok. So, that is one version of running 1 versus 1 which is a call a tournament right. So, essentially what you are suggesting is run a tournament right. So, you train lot of 1 versus 1 classifiers and then you run a tournament right. So, you need to train that many classifiers, but when you are deploying it you will have fewer numbers to use right but the problem with that is suppose your a versus b classifier was weak right yeah. then you would throw out a incorrectly right suppose if you had run a versus b and then b1 but if you had run a versus c and a versus d also a might win against all of those 
right and then uh, b might lose to c and d then it becomes a, an issue right so a would have gotten two votes well b would have gotten only one vote and then what do you do right so so if classifies are good then tournaments are great right if classifies are weak right you have problem in tournament that you might eliminate things a little early right and the, the another problem with the tournament is uh, you can identify only the most likely class right if i want you to give me a ranking of class labels okay that can't be done with with tournaments okay but if you have hundreds of class labels right so you have some uh, you have to uh, give up on something so essentially give up on the correctness and you essentially try to run a tournament if you have a lot of class labels try running tournaments on this right so does scikit learn implement a tournament automatically do you know it does one versus one Yeah, that is that is fine. What about SVMs? Uh, SVMs. It does, it supports multi-class SVMs. Yeah. But mul does. there is nothing called multi-class SVM. You have to do one of these. It does. Uh, one uh, I'll one take one it back. That is a multi-class SVM. I'll take it back. But that is not what Scikit-Learn does. Yeah, go on. It does. I don't. I don't think it mentions that it does a tournament. It does something. One. It does one versus one, but in some other fashion. Okay, fine. Fine. Uh, so, but this might be something you might want to um, try. Okay. Now going back. Uh, so I told you that um, it's possible that you have severe class imbalance in a uh, in a hundred class classification problem even, right? So you have one class that has like a million data points, and each of the other classes have like a thousand data points, right? So what would you do in that case? So I, we spoke about some ways of fixing the problem, right? The class imbalance problem. So weighing some one class. More than the other, huh? Ah, uh, undersampling, oversampling. Did we talk about those? At some point, I vaguely remember discussing class imbalance in the class. No. We discuss class imbalance in the class, right? So there are different ways of fixing that. You could try that. Alternatively, you could try some kind of a hierarchical classification, right? So what you do in hierarchical classification is uh, you essentially try to split the classes into two groups. Okay, and then say that okay, first level I'll see whether it goes into group one or whether it goes to group two. Okay, and the next level, then within group one, I'll try to assign it to a specific class, right? Or I can split it into groups three and four, and then within that group three, I'll assign it to a specific class, right? You could do some kind of hierarchical classification. So what's the challenge here? So, huh? Sorry. Choosing the hierarchies, yeah, choosing the groups, right? So unless the groups come to you somehow from the domain itself, right? Sometimes you could have uh, like uh, people classify web pages, right? And then you can go and look into some uh, some open directory project or something like that, and they would have nicely classified web pages for you there, right? So you'll have a hierarchy of web pages. There you can then look at the classification down the hierarchy. So you'll start off with saying, okay, entertainment versus news, and then within news you could have say politics, sports, and then within entertainment you will have movies and uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know, sports comes under news or entertainment. Uh, so wherever right so you, you could uh, you will have this kind of hierarchies and then uh, you can use this hierarchy to give you your hierarchical classification right in the absence of that right how would you want to do this if you want to induce a hierarchy i'll give you a flat set of 100 labels if you want to induce a hierarchy on this 100 labels how would you do this Clustering, I heard clustering. So, what do you do with clustering? How do you do clustering in this case? Just cluster the data points blindly. Yeah, that but then you are essentially solving, we, we do not know which way to solve it, right? So, how will you cluster it? Uh, yeah, people are throwing up all kinds of terms now, right? So, the point is you have. Um, so the, the intuition is the following, I have this class condition densities, I know okay this is class 1 what are the data points, this is class 2 what are the data points right. So I would like to group them in such a way that the class condition densities belonging to one group are very different from the class condition densities belonging to the other group, right, does that make sense, right. 
suppose my data is like this right so I have all my class 1 here class 2 here class 4 here and class 5 data points are here okay. 4 okay. So, which what is what what is the grouping that suggests to you itself suggests itself to you 1 and 2 should be one thing and 3 and 4 should be the other right. So, if you think about it so this is the class condition and if you are assuming these are drawn from Gaussians right I will have a mean here and some variance over this and the mean will be somewhere here and some covariance. So, these look closer right than the means of these distributions. So, that is the basic idea one way of achieving this is to say that ok I will do clustering right and then I look at the class labels that fall together right uh, which which class labels fall together more often this is very nicely done right. So, what if my classes are actually like this. The classes look like this now it is harder to harder to separate them out right. So, what we can possibly end up doing something like this right I find some clusters some groups of data points like that and now predominantly in this ok I have class 1 predominantly in this I have class 2 predominantly in this I have class 3 and predominantly in this whatever predominantly in this class 3 class 4. Now, I start looking at which is which of the clusters are similar and then I can to some kind of predict which values the training data is given to you right. So, you have the training data you are just doing clustering on the training data. So, the training data will tell you what the class labels are right. This is just the this really no formal way of doing it I am just giving you tips practical tips for getting addressing some very large uh, problems. Sorry. So, I have done these clusters now right I have clusters and I can I can figure out which clusters are similar to which cluster which clusters are close right I have some description right suppose I am using some of some kind of a Gaussian model for describing my clusters I will have some description of the clusters right. So, I can I can now figure out which cluster is close to which cluster I will talk about hierarchical clustering uh, depending on today or <coughs> Friday. Uh, <laughs> Uh, where Friday stands for next class ok. So, today or uh, Friday uh, I will talk about uh, the hierarchical clustering then you can see that ok there are 4 clusters and then these 2 clusters get merged first and then these 2 clusters get merged. So, at that point I can say hey ok now I am going to say all the, the, the classes which are more prevalent in these 2 clusters should go together the classes that are more prevalent in these 2 clusters should go together. the data points that belong to those clusters you go and build a classifier right. First classifier you build on all the data points that separates these 2 clusters from these 2 clusters that is basically. So, I do not want to do a distinction at the very beginning I do not want to do a distinction between this and that this and this and so on and so forth right. Then how does this help us in class imbalance? what if originally you had class imbalance what if originally one one class had a million points and all the other classes had a thousand points each. Then maybe if you can get your clusters so there is a million flat things on one and the other thing is solid. Yeah if that is supported right if the data supports that <coughs> yeah million and this is yeah extreme but say 10,000 to one class but then we do get okay. real data like that.
I didn't get it. So uh, we were making clusters, right, on the class level. So it does not matter what the size of the cluster is. Uh, so all points belonging to a same level would fall into in a same cluster. So uh, how would it cause a class imbalance? No, no, it will not cause cost imbalance. I'm asking how will it relieve you from co co class imbalance? It does not suffer. We are getting a cluster that's, uh, that has only uh, some. So, see, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not using the clustering itself to do the classification, right? I'm only doing the clustering so that I can group the class labels. And then I go back and try to solve the classification problem after that. Yeah. So I, I I I suppose all of you are going to try out different things. 